everyone! Today I'm making a video talking about the other names that may be used for pandas and pans. Pandas and pans are the most common names uh, used to describe the conditions, but I there are other ones, and I recently made a short clip talking very briefly about the difference between pans and pandas. So I thought I would go into that in a bit more depth first of all. So pandas stands for paediatric autoimmune neuropsychiatric disorder associated with streptococcal infection. Um, and the diagnostic criteria is sudden onset OCD and or tics that are triggered by strep. And the strep infection has to be proven for that. Um, and the onset has to occur, I believe it's before the age of 12. Um, and the condition can't be put down to another condition. So it's not from Tourette's, it's not from Sydenham's chorea, it's not from another form of encephalitis or anything like that. Um, and for PANS, the diagnostic criteria is sudden onset OCD and or food restriction plus symptoms from at least two other categories. The categories include anxiety, so that can include separation anxiety or um, a new onset phobias that aren't linked to the OCD necessarily. Um, the next category is emotional ability and or depression. Um, that could also include like outbursts of laughing and crying. That could include low mood. That could include um, sudden, mood sudden mood changes or really intense moods. Um, the next category is irritability, rage attacks and oppositional defiance. That's quite self-explanatory, but people may become violent. They may act really out of character, um, really stubborn in a way, really rigid. The next thing is developmental and behavioural regression. What am I doing with my hand? <laughs> developmental and behavioural regression is where people may speak differently, they may act differently, and they, they may act and even feel younger than their actual age. Um, and they may lose the ability to do things or... Uh, they may go backwards on developmental milestones. The next thing is deterioration in school so and academics. So people may have that due to brain fog, hand, handwriting problems, math problems, ADHD-like symptoms, um, memory problems as well. The next thing is, uh, the next category is sensory or motor abnormalities and that can include tics. I believe that includes psychosis as well. Um, Although that isn't specifically in the diagnostic criteria, but that would probably come under sensory abnormalities um, and sensory processing issues, of course. Um, and then the last one is somatic symptoms, which can include urinary problems and sleep disturbances. There we go. That's the PANS diagnostic criteria. Oh, but also for PANS, it can happen at any age. And of course, um, the symptoms can't be put down to another medical condition like Tourette's or classic OCD or ADHD or autism, or you get the idea. It's not fitting into another box. So the different terms used, pandas and pans are the most common terms, pandas is a subset of pans, so pans encompasses um, you know all different types of infectious and non-infectious triggers and because pandas is from a non uh, is from an infectious trigger but specifically strep that is a subset of pans. Um, <clears throat> I think researchers and specialists have said that they do think that other subsets can come to light, but at the minute it's just big pans with little pandas being the subset. Um, but yes, that's why pandas and pans has a different diagnostic criteria. But the the infections that can trigger pans can include things like um, influenza, um, mycoplasma, pneumonia, Lyme disease, things like that. And Pans can also have non-infectious triggers, and that can be metabolic problems, endocrine problems potentially, and even trauma. So this, why I'm explaining this is because it will help with the explanations of the other names. So the next, the next thing we get to is PITANS. PITANS is Paediatric Infection Triggered Autoimmune Neuropsychiatric Disorders. I So PITANS is exclusively when it is triggered by an infection so pandas would be under that and so would infection triggered pans but the pans cases that aren't triggered by infections which are triggered by metabolic problems and stress and things like that won't be included under pitans. Basal ganglia encephalitis is another term used I've made a video on that that was called I think should pandas pans be renamed basal ganglia encephalitis and the reason it's uh, some people call it that is because pandas and pans affect the basal ganglia which is part of the brain and 
in some cases inflammation is present present in the brain and that may not be the case in people who haven't had an infectious trigger or where the inflammation can't be detected but for a lot of people there is inflammation in the basal ganglia which is why some people refer to it as basal ganglia encephalitis although sometimes it gets even more complex and people may refer to it very very specifically as um post-streptococcal autoimmune encephalitis of the basal ganglia or something like that it's, it's quite quite a mouthful um quite a long name um and some people also call it exorcist syndrome now exorcist syndrome is what's often used in the media i've noticed when pandas and pandas discussed it might be because it's a way for people to convey the horror um of it 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 can look and feel like a possession it's not my ocd did once try to convince me that i was possessed i'm not i have pandas pans um but i think that's a, a name that can convey what it is like to live with um and it's a name that may be viewed may be viewed as sensationalism but some people in the community do use that every now and then i guess it is just a way to convey what it feels like now cams stands for childhood acute neuropsychiatric symptoms i believe and this is pretty much the same as pans um it's where the neuropsychiatric symptoms start very suddenly there's also immune mediated neurobehavioral disorder or immune mediated neurological disorder or something along those lines and with that i think that's sort of the diagnosis given when doctors don't really want to say it's pandas pans either because they don't like the names pandas pans or they want to avoid the stigma around pandas pans i think that's probably what it is um because with pandas pans i think so many people have been indoctrinated with misinformation on it that it's created such a big stigma and a big negative attitude towards pandas and pans so i think when doctors are diagnosing people sometimes they just want to avoid the terms pandas and pans um so they'll label it as immune mediated uh neurological disorder immune mediated neurobehavioral disorder or something like that as well thank you for watching this video on the different names that can be used for pandas and pans